reading in the open Bible, not for any particular reason of it being open, or that it's a King James, although for some people I know that's a big deal, but the reality is, is that whatever Bible you use, <laughs> maybe we'll take this one up, whatever Bible you use is the one that God will speak through, because God doesn't need a particular scripture, he doesn't need a particular word, you see, God is God, so he can speak direct if he wants to, and if he chooses to, then he could come to you in your day and intercede or intervene in it just by being the very fact that he is the living God. So it's not so important what Bible you have or what scripture you read, as much as you trust in the Lord to lead you, to teach you, to instruct you in the ways of righteousness. Because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to make the word alive to you. It won't be any other way. There's nothing I can say or any other teacher in the world or the universe that can bring the word of God to you, except that you have the Holy Spirit in you, opening your ears, opening your eyes, helping you to understand. For without the Holy Spirit to cause you to understand these things which are written herein, there's no way you will know what you're reading about, who you're reading about, and what is going on in the scriptures. That is the only way. So we've decided that in reading this, we only want to read what it says. We don't want to add to it, nor do we want to take away from it. But in this item specific way of looking at the scriptures, this is, what we're doing is we're reading it as it is, the way it is, the way it is meant to be. What it is, is what it is. I know that sounds kind of street lingo, but it's also a theological premise that proposes the idea that God placed each individual word, every dot, iota, and every syllable, if you want to call it that, or even every chapter and verse, even though those have been added, in there for a specific purpose, for a specific reason. He, not me, and not the printers, designed it in such a way that whether it has flaws or whether it doesn't, is irrelevant to the fact that God is not flawful, <laughs> and he does not have flaws, but he is able to use this that he uses. He uses what he uses. Now, some of this is going to sound stupid the way I'm saying it, but there's no other way to get people to deal with the reality of practical, factual reading. It is what it is the way you read it. The Bible says what it means, and it means what it says. And that's a nice cliche for other people to get off on adding an interpretation, but we don't do that here. It's a nice way to get off on trying to explain what the Greek says or the Hebrew, but we don't do that here either. We just read it the way it is. And sometimes we find out that maybe there's some things added that we think is there, that it doesn't say it is. It's just an idea that's been proposed. And now we take it for granted that it's in there. And sadly, unfortunately, <laughs> if somebody ever confronted you on it, you'd find out that's not in the Bible. The idea might be proposed, but it's not there. So as we read it, remember that. We're not going to add to it, and we're not going to take away from it. We're going to read it as it is. In Genesis, we are reading in verse 11 and 12 in chapter 1. And verse 11 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding his kind, whose seed is in itself, upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it was good. Let's read that again. This time straight through. Matter of fact, you know what? I think I'll get comfortable. I don't think you mind that. Because I have the wrong reading glasses on, so I kind of have to do a double take on it. 
In verse 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it was good. So we see in verse 11, starting off, as it seems to be typical, and God said. Oh, so God said, not man said, not it's an idea, not it was told to me, but God said. So the reality is, if you want to know what God said in creation, read it. That's all. And what did he say? And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. That's what God said. Now, you can debate it, you can argue about it, you can say it's an interpretation, but guess what? It's what God said. That's all. Hey, you got a problem with it? You got to talk to God about it. Sorry. <laughs> it's not questionable here. It's what God said, and that's all we know. We know that God said, let the earth bring forth grass. So, if a child asks me, where did the grass come from? Well, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. I think I can show you here in the Bible that that's what God said. Now, did he do it? We haven't gotten to 12 yet, have we? But he did say it. So, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. So, the earth brought forth grass. It doesn't say that it mutated. It doesn't say he created. It doesn't say that he obfuscated in some way, some other means with which the earth brought forth grass. He just simply says, let the earth bring forth grass. I said it. Did it get done? We'll see. The herb, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed. So there's grass and, or is it grass that is the herb yielding seed? Don't know. Doesn't say. It just says, that the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed. Hmm. Does grass have seed? I think so. Is it an herb? Didn't know that. Maybe grass is an herb. Hmm. Interesting. Something to think about. Because God said it. I like to think about it. Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. The fruit tree. Not every tree, but the fruit tree yielding his kind, or yielding, no, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. So the fruit is after his kind, and it's the ones that are yielding fruit. Hmm. So it's not like a pine tree is going to yield fruit. Maybe an orange tree yields oranges. Maybe a lemon tree yields lemons, but I don't think a weeping willow yields weeping or willows. Maybe there's something here about what God said. After his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. So it wasn't like we're gonna grow it in a in a test tube <laughs> or it's gonna come out of the mud. Hmm. Hmm. But it was upon the earth. Interesting. So it says the earth brings forth grass. So the earth brings forth grass. Okay, we got that. You know, and it's an herb yielding seed. Okay, we got that. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth. It's not upon the waters, but it's upon the earth. And it was so. Interesting at the end of it, it says, after God said it, and it was so. It doesn't say how, does it? it? doesn't say why. It doesn't say when. We've already been told where, but it doesn't really say where completely, but it says, and it was so. So what it says to me is that God said this, and it was so. It isn't like he spoke it into existence, because that's not what it says. It just says, and it was so, meaning that it 
either became that way or it is that way. But it doesn't stay spoken into existence. Because you see, there's a lot of people that like to change the word in Genesis just a little bit so that they could go, oh, if only I had the same power word to use to make it so. Because they want to make something out of nothing that they think they can do with by changing the words here instead of it God said and it was so. I don't think that you having the word or any word is going to make it so. But I may be wrong because the only thing I know is right here of what it is. And what it says is what it is, where it is, as it is. Pretty simple to me. And it says, And the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. Hmm. And the earth brought forth grass. So first we're told that the earth bring forth grass. Then we're told, and the earth brought forth grass. Neither one says time span. Neither one says a gap. Neither one says instantaneous or seasonal. We only know God said it, and then he goes out of his way to tell us it was so, and then he tells us, and the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. So what God said, it was so, and then we could see that it happened. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Read that a few times. See what you get. Don't add anything to it. Just see what you get. And the interesting thing is, in seeing that happen, it's almost as though God said it, it was so, then it occurred, because look at this next part. And God saw that it was good. Wow. So God said it, it was so, then it happens, and God saw that it was good. So, everything that happened so far that we've read was good. I don't see anything wrong here. I don't see a transmutational shift in analysis going on here. I only see some simple words that make it simple for a little child to understand about creation, like me, that God said that the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind of seed is in and of itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the seed yielding after its kind, and after its kind, you know, yielding that which was it was so. And God saw it was good. Ooh. So, in reading that, do we really get confused if we just read the words the way they are, as they are? Is it that complicated or is it pretty simple? For me, I keep getting out of it, God said, and God saw it was good. What he said seems to have happened, just the way he said it. I'm not going to add anything to it, and I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to listen, I'm going to read it, I'm going to hear it, and I'm going to know that what God said, it was so.